in the past year, the Infra team has released four major version upgrades, which include a bunch of uh, new features uh, and fixes. Among these new features, uh, the, the most impactful one, in my opinion, is the new API, which made IOTEX fully compatible uh, with the Web3. And with the uh, Web3 incompatible uh, compatible API, uh, users could interact with IOTEX via MetaMask, and developers could directly use um, Remix, Truffle, or Hothead to develop their DApp or adopt their existing DApp to IOTEX. Uh, so uh, meanwhile, uh, the Infra team also uh, faces uh, many challenges. And in my opinion, the most critical one so far is the uh, data corruption, uh, which destroyed four of our major coin contract. And luckily, we successfully fully resolved the issue uh, eventually. Um, as Larry just mentioned, the LTube uh, is one of the key products that we are trying, uh, we are developing to connect our text to the other chains. And uh, currently, uh, uh, in the, the latest version of IOTube is the V5, uh, on, on top of which we support dozens of assets and with over 85 million uh, that total value locked. So uh, it's pretty challenging because of the, uh, we need to make sure that all the assets are secure. And we, are, we have here a lot of uh, the uh, issues of the other breaches that their coin gets stolen or something. And uh, that's something that we, we, we pay a lot of attention to, to make sure that the tube is secure and it's decentralized, uh, such that it won't be corrupted uh, with one point, uh, one, one failure point. Uh, and uh, so uh, in, in the coming year, we are planning to launch a new version of the LTube, uh, which is LTube V3. Uh, it will allow assets to transfer in between any two blockchain pairs. And uh, this, uh, as, as Larry uh, has introduced previously, uh, we will also unify like all the uh, USDT. So you can easily transfer your USDT uh, on uh, BSC to Ethereum or to Polygon or the other uh, blockchains that we support. Uh, this will be of great convenience for users to use IOTube to transfer in their assets. Um, and uh, the, I think from the product side, uh, uh, Web3 is the, the, the one that I'm uh, optimistic for its future. And right now the Web3 uh, is uh, serving uh, Pebble and Meta Pebble. Uh, and I can see that it, it will be very useful uh, and helpful to connect the IoT devices to blockchain, uh, more IoT devices to blockchain. And uh, we also launched, uh, we, uh, in the next year, we will also launch some unique IoT features on the IoT blockchain and provide a secure and stable infra to serve IoT eco ecosystem better Meanwhile, we want to uh, attract more talent developers to contribute to Altex. So the community, if you are interested in helping Altex to be a more secure and stronger uh, uh, ecosystem, join us. The onboarding of Web2 companies in a, in a seamless way requires a lot. You know, the tech is one thing, but the know-how about how to use the tech and of course the underlying research behind the tech is super important. And that's kind of what I wanted to ask Xinxin about is, um, you know, you have a lot of these research and standardization and hardware initiatives going on. You were kind enough to uh, share some slides as well. So I'm gonna yeah. have you uh, give a little overview of what's going on with the, the research and the hardware side of things at IOTEX. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, could you go to the, there's another slide yeah. about the hardware. Yeah. Yeah, we may first go to uh, these slides, right? So. Uh, as our community know, right? So we're starting exploring how the IoT should work correctly. Right? Think about the IoT infrastructure today. Uh, we just recently or constantly seeing a lot of uh, IoT companies have shut off, 
right? So which uh, immediately impact is the uh, people's light cannot be turned on. The door is always locked, right? So you cannot go home, actually. So <laughs> you look at these fundamental issues, we already see it's a centralized architecture, right? So entire architecture running by the device manufacturer. Uh, that, yeah, that's why if they gone out of the business, uh, your, all of your device no longer work, right? So uh, we re realized this issue uh, a couple of years ago, starting looking at uh, what's, uh, yeah, what's a new way to, uh, to building the, the IoT ecosystem and infrastructure, right? So how you user can really control your, your device. Uh, that's why we start experimenting uh, with, uh, with the different partners. The first product we released to the market is UCAM, right? So UCAM compared to the other uh, home camera you have, been, you have been used, uh, the unique features you can immediately gain the privacy. So uh, the, 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 the key to decrypt, to decrypt your radio uh, is, is owned by you, right? So you immediately uh, got the ownership uh, about the, the, the data generated or collected from your device. So yeah, that's a very interesting uh, initiative. Uh, we're starting exploring uh, what's the correct form for a web, uh, web three IoT device. Right? So after that, uh, yeah, uh, we we, uh, we created the pipe tracker, right? So that's a, a very interesting uh, hardware. Uh, we uh, yeah, based on our uh, learning from the past, uh, we thought um, yeah, what's the correct form for a new Web three oriented IoT device? Yeah, that's why we created the pipe tracker, right? So we use this one. Uh, to explore uh, how we put the, um, the IoT technology together with blockchain and token economy together uh, to enable all kinds of machine file applications. Right? So uh, Pipe Tracker actually is the first, uh, uh, first uh, device. I would like to see Web3 web oriented IoT device, which can really work with uh, blockchain and token context. Right? So uh, in the you know, upcoming months, uh, months, you are going to see uh, some yeah, uh, decentralized applications will be available on the machine file portal. Uh, yeah, once you hook up your pipe tracker, you are uh, you are able to experience uh, what what we mean by the machine file. Right. So, uh, yeah, this device also unlocked a lot lot of opportunities for us uh, from hardware perspective. Right. So we learn what's the requirements from industry, from our user, from customers, and uh, how to really merge uh, the IoT, blockchain, and and uh, and the token economies together, right? So, uh, yeah, that's why uh, we are closely collaborating uh, with a lot of industry partners now. Try to bring more, uh, yeah, more those uh, IoT device uh, into the machine by world. Right? So, uh, yeah, that's uh, some uh, future plan and uh, ongoing activities uh, with industry, uh, different industry partners. Uh, you're expecting the different type of device uh, you you will see. Uh, and you can you, you, you can you can purchase uh, that one uh, we will have the machine uh, yeah machine fire experience I would like to say uh, so uh, that's all about the the, the hardware piece uh, let's talk uh, yeah let's talk a little bit more about the, uh, the research aspect yeah during the past few years yeah we have been doing a lot uh, in the innovation aspect uh, as well as industry collaboration and standardization right so uh, we collaborate with uh, uh, yeah, academic researchers, published uh, 15 research articles in all kinds of conferences and uh, journals. Uh, those, yeah, some of those, uh, yeah, uh, some of the technologies uh, proposed there actually become one of the core technologies in the IoT, uh, you know, IoTX product. Uh, we also collaborate with industry experts to see how we, how IoTX technology can help them uh, doing the digital transformation. Right, so that's why we create the eight industry white papers, uh, technology brief, as well as the specifications uh, with the industry partners and uh, other experts. So those, uh, yeah, those publications have been widely received by the industry consortiums uh, and standardization body. So uh, we are also leading two uh, international standards uh, working group uh, focusing on the, the blockchain and the IoT intersection. Uh, one will be focusing on the IoT Blockchain integration uh, use cases. Other another will be focusing on the identity and access management. Yeah, we yeah we feel uh, yeah one of the uh, pattern uh, for for one of the uh, yeah like the applications. Also, uh, we published one thought leadership leadership article uh, recently on on Forbes. So that's briefly covered uh, what's going on uh, during the past few years. Uh, on the research side, into collaboration side, as, as well as the standardization. 
uh, yeah, moving, moving forward, we are continue uh, working with different partners and uh, using, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, using the technologies we learn and uh, also co-invented with the partners uh, to moving forward uh, for the entire machine learning ecosystem. Thank you. Awesome. Great update, Xingqin. Thank you so much for that. And it just really shows that, you know, it's not just blindly putting products out or improvements to our technology out. It's really underpinned by a lot of detailed research and design. So um, there's levels to this, obviously. You know, I think uh, bringing blockchain into the mainstream IoT requires these kind of more long-term standardization efforts and buy-in from enterprises. So as we uh, try to bring IoT to the blockchain sector, we're also trying to bring blockchain to the IoT sector. I think we have built everything kind of come from scratch, right? So like a layer one blockchain, multiple layers, you know, P2P, EVM, state transition, API. Um, you know, eventually like we have done the layer one chain, which has been launched in 2019, has been like a running by 100 more delegates worldwide, processing 40 million transactions. So that part goes so well. And we are still, of course, kind of enhance the performance, security, and decentralization for this chain. Um, you know, but you know, so, but definitely like we're also working on things actually on top of the chain, right? So I think we kind of mentioned about this one in the previous session, like there's a cross chain bridge, there's a wallet, there's Explorer, there's SDK around the chain. So developers and users can easily use the chain, no matter it's an NFT or game or machine five or D5, right? So that's, that's one thing. And another thing that's really big this year is TrueStream, which we changed the name to WebStream, uh, as Clear suggested. Uh, I, I do think that's a lovely name, WebStream. So that is like a layer two built on top of the layer one chain, interacting with the machines, right? So basically there are two kind of important functions for WebStream. So one is governance of the machines, meaning how you onboard those machines, how you bind those machines to the user's address, how you revoke them, or how you punish them if they do something wrong. So that's on the government side. On the other side is like the, how the data actually coming out from the chain, the machine, sorry, and you know coming all the way to the to the layer one uh, contract. So like the principle here is true stream or web stream will be the data caching layer. You know, uh, caching a lot of data coming from the devices, and they will produce some sort of proof. Could be a Merkle proof. Could be a zk proof to the layer one contract basically proves, oh, Larry, you have, you know, driving this car from A to B. So you're eligible for 10 tokens. Something like that can be built on top of Biotex. So yeah, so they feel like uh, we're expanding our infra team, our product team. So anyone you have interest, please contact us.